Good day and welcome to Custom Craft and Adventure. My name is Derek. I'm a DIY fabricator and a bit of an adventurer as well. And today I'm going to present to you the last episode of this canopy build. Have you ever failed? Are you listening? Damn. Uh. Yeah. shed again uh, as you can see this is a current setup uh, and this is the final form of the project uh, so I'm going to go through quite a few things as an overview of the design the shape awning placement rear rack versus roof rack uh, why swing arm tire carrier uh, current problems future plans and my biggest regret in the whole project all right, the first section is uh, about the design. So, uh, as you can see, uh, uh, what I'm trying to tell you is, is actually a room. I'll, I'll open the door and show you. So this is how we entry. Uh, it's actually not this side, it's the other side, by the way. So as we go in, it's quite dark in there, uh, but it, it's actually a room. So as we go in, we, we're able to stand inside. It is taller than me. And then, and the uh, the second level is the sleeping compartment. So uh, this is basically our living room. And then, as we are ready to sleep, uh, we just climb up there and sleep. Pros and cons of this design uh, is that well, essentially the biggest advantage is saving a panel on top. So that is equivalent to 10 to 20 kilograms of saving. Uh, that is a, a lot of weight. Uh, and well, if you, if you talk about the disadvantage, I actually can't find any. Perhaps uh, you, you, you can't sleep right on top of your storage, uh, which means you will have to extend your sleeping compartment in the front. Uh, that's actually also one of the biggest problems uh, of this design. I'll go through it a little bit later. Alright, number two, uh, the shape. So, this canopy is in a box shape. Uh, as opposed to the most common profile shape. Uh, the, the reason why I chose the box shape, two reasons, it's easy to make and also it gives, uh, gives us a lot more space, uh, usable space inside. Imagine you, 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 you have uh, cut out this corner and that is a lot of space as well. Uh, and obviously this advantage is that you might have a bit of uh, uh, bit more air resistance when you're traveling uh, well that, that will be a compromise but honestly after after this trip oh by the way we've gone to uh, recently gone gone up to the north uh, of WA and in this trip that involves a lot of driving uh, and in this trip oh, honestly I couldn't find any um, any bad fuel economy and it was like uh, by calculation of the distance and the fuel usage is around 15 liters per hundred uh, kilo, 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 kilometers. Uh, so it's actually a very good fuel economy. But obviously, if you go for a profile design, uh, you sacrifice the, the space, but then you get a fuel economy that's even less than 15. All right, number three, awning placement. So if you watch my previous videos, previous episodes, uh, you know, you will know that I've got an ostrich wing awning and this awning is quite heavy, it's 30 kilograms, it opens up uh, 270 degrees uh, and it's self-supporting as well but it's not about the awning, it's about how I place it um, so you would ask, why would you not just mount the awning outside or just on top of the box canopy? Uh, to answer that question, uh, you know how wide the canopy is, right? It's about it's more than 1.8 meters. So if I have to put it out there, uh, it's just too. Oh, uh, it takes too much space. It's, it's, it has a higher risk of a higher chance of hitting things when I go off road, especially. And also it adds on the air resistance and it decreases the fuel economy. And if you come back a little bit uh, and have a look, uh, I'm not too sure if you can if you can see it. Uh, in part of the design, I've cut out this notch, so that is to accommodate the awning. So it minimizes the stick out uh, on the side. And that way it minimizes the air resistance and also decrease, uh, minimizes the chance uh, to hit things when I go for narrow off-road tracks. 
All right, number four, rear rack versus roof rack. Uh, so in most four-wheel drive um, arrangements, storage, storage organization, uh, usually they have the roof rack, uh, and obviously it goes to the roof. Uh, but that, you know, one thing that I really hate about going for or off-road or four-wheel driving is that when you have to access the stuff on the roof, you have to climb, and honestly, um, that is very cumbersome for me, and I really hate doing that. Uh, and to, to be honest with you, I don't really put so many things on top, uh, and that's why I I thought about this sort of rack system in the rear. Uh, so good good thing and bad things. Uh, uh, while it is not as top heavy compared to the roof rack. Uh, but obviously it's a little bit more rear heavy but we're only talking about 5 to I don't know 5 to 10 kilograms at the rear and in this design it's a short canopy I've got room at the back to put whatever I want and it also allows me to mount uh, things like shovel uh, and the spare tire carrier and I'm going to talk about it a little bit later so anything that you want to put at the back you can put at the back alright number 5 of this video is about the swing arm tire carrier. So many of you would ask, uh, you have a half canopy, why would I bother putting a swing arm tire carrier? Uh, because most designs are fixed. So my answer is, if you have a fixed tire carrier, that means you have sacrificed a space. Uh, especially if you have two of them in here. So what do you do with this space? is just a whole bloody waste, isn't it? So, the advantage of having a swing arm tire carrier is that it's removable and you can actually check out my previous video, I'll put a link somewhere in here. Um, now I'll show you how that works. So the tire is sticking, uh, well, it is here and it's taking this much of space. I have this space to use and now I'm going to expand my space. So it has got a uh, toggle latch in here. And I've made myself a mechanism up here to release the catch. Okay, now it's been released. I just yeah, lift it a little bit so it comes up with me. Now I have got a full, full width of the, um, what, do you, what do you call this? The tray, the tray space. To do whatever I want. I want to sit here, I want to cook here, I want to do it as I like. Alright, uh, number six. Rooftop tent again. So, uh, if you watched one of my previous videos, uh, I said uh, uh, I review one of the roof, uh, very uh, popular rooftop tent in the market uh, because we used one of them and we think that was a pain in the backside. Uh, so, we've ditched that and we swapped to Swax because it's the easiest way to go camping and most economical way as well. So after using Swag for uh, maybe a couple of years and uh, we noticed a problem, it's really difficult to pack up. Um, because we're using a double Swag, it's especially super big, if you know what I mean. Uh, and that's why uh, uh, we, we just thought of maybe going back to some forms of rooftop tech again, but not a commercial one because they're so expensive. Um, so the good, the, the good thing about the rooftop tent is the, uh, the preparation and the pack-up. It doesn't take uh, more than a minute, honestly. Uh, and I'm referring to a, a hard shell rooftop tent. So the, the normal, uh, the commercial hard shell rooftop tent usually involves a latch magnet. So once you open it, it just uh, opens up according to the gas rights. Uh, and when you pack up, you increase the tension of the, uh, uh, the canvas and you just pull it, pull it back down. Uh, it's very easy, it, is, it has no hassle factor. Uh, but if you think about a swag, every, uh, when you go to the camp, you set it up, the next morning you pack it up, and then you move camp, you do the whole thing again, which is just too tiring, honestly. And we're getting old, just, we haven't got enough strength to do that anymore. All right, number seven, um, why do it yourself? Um, so, I spent six months making this thing, by the way, uh, and honestly, if I, if I had to do it again, I might actually get someone, uh, I might actually get smarter and do it part, do it yourself, 
and uh, the, uh, the harder part maybe just get someone to do it. Uh, the reason is it's just too difficult, it's beyond my ability. There, there was a time that I thought uh, whether I actually pick up a job that I, it's impossible to finish. But uh, I just persevere and, and finish the job at the end. Um, but the advantage about DIY projects is that it, uh, most of the time it saves money. It doesn't save time, but in the process you actually spend the time and pick up a new skill. So in this case, I, uh, I managed to, to bend thin sheet metal using my own stuff. And uh, I've learned how to weld aluminium, both thick uh, gauge, uh, with thick sheets or, 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 or thin, thinner material as well. Um, so that's, I, I reckon it's a, it's a time that I've spent to learn new skills. And in the end, I've learned how to make things perfectly. Uh, and sometimes when you go to some other uh, fabrication stores, uh, you, you don't know about them. Right? It's just really hard to judge the skill level. If you pick up the skill, you do it yourself, and you have confidence of your uh, of your of the of your own engineering, of your own construction. All right. Uh, next one is number eight: current problems. So uh, this is a DIY project. Even a non-DIY project, nothing is perfect. But I uh, we, we've gone to the north. Uh, this trip and we've noticed there are quite a few things that we have to improve. Uh, so firstly, as you notice, uh, what, what the hell is this? This is actually a rain skirt. Uh, and we've, we've made the rain skirt to, uh, to minimize the, uh, to decrease the rain from entering the camp. Make it waterproof, in other words. But uh, you, as you notice, this, the rain skirt is not long enough, uh, so we uh, we have to extend extend the rain skirt, uh, so rain will not come in. Uh, and we've we've proven one point: rain does go in, so it actually gets wet. This this rain. rains. Uh, if you look at this side, this is how we put stuff at the moment. It's quite a mess. How embarrassing. Uh, but we haven't got enough time to organize the whole cargo. So we'll, we'll talk about it later, how to improve the interior. So the interior needs to be improved. Uh, oh, actually, the canvas actually came off in our first night of camping. As a start, the canvas was, uh, was secured by Velcro. And of course, Velcro doesn't hold the canvas in corrugation. Uh, luckily, I've got some self tapping screw. And, uh, and, and a tack gun with me as well. So um, we, we just used the self tapping screw and screw, screw the Velcro in, uh, screw the canvas into the um, uh, square sections. So that's how, it, that's how we secure them at the moment. So the other thing that I've got on, uh, on my notes is uh, uh, oh, yeah, the sleeping compartment. Uh, remember, I told you earlier in one of the points, uh, I, I said, a uh, disadvantage of this design is perhaps the sleeping compartment is not big enough. So, uh, to, to solve this problem, I'm thinking about putting some extension in here. Uh, and I'm hoping that extension can be, a, uh, can be something that we can use more than just for sleeping. Uh, and that way, that is allowed, that, that has enough room to fit my whole height, 1.8. Uh, anything else that I have to supplement? Oh, oh yeah. The flyer. The flyer. So the flyer, uh, at the moment, we haven't actually got a solution for it. Uh, as you can see, that is supposed to be a flyer, and that is supposed to have something tensioning it. And uh, I don't know how to deal with it. Perhaps I'm going to put a guy rope here and attach to the awning or attach to the ground. So, but he has got three loops that I can attach to. But once it's been attached, it'll be all right. All right, uh, I think it's number nine. Uh, number nine, future plans. So I briefly talked about it earlier. Uh, I wanted to put some sort some forms extension here. And that extension should be uh, uh, should be multifunctional. 
So not only to support my head, uh, oh by the way we sleep head pointing this way, the foot pointing that way because we've got more room in here. Uh, so it gives me more, more room to support my head and also uh, I'm hoping in some forms of a slightly in and out pantry so I can have an option to access things over here uh, more, co more, more conveniently, things like that. And the other thing is, uh, at the moment I've got the battery in the car. So I'm, I'm trying to move the battery system from the car in the canopy. And all that is going to happen at once. Uh, and at the moment I'm actually waiting for a, a, an electric water heater to come in. And so that way it's a major upgrade of an electric system. We've got a switch panel going in. So everything is going to move from here to there. Alright, last but not least, uh, number 10. Biggest regret. Um, two things. The doors and the roof. Originally when, when I designed the, uh, the canopy, I wanted to keep the weight low. And that's why I use 1.5 or 1.6 millimeter aluminium sheet for the roof and the door. Uh, but I've never been so wrong because they are so flimsy. Uh, as you can see, the, the door is actually flexing by traveling. Uh, this one is not too bad, the other side is worse. I mean, the, the process of making was quite easy because it's thin, but then um, I'm not too sure if you can see it, but it's actually uh, loose. And this side, for some reason, is getting looser all the time. It's getting easier to close all the time and easier to open. So I'm getting a little bit concerned. So this door and the other door, uh, I'll have to put some, some sort of mechanism here to strengthen. Uh, probably just by adding another latch system, uh, it's not as it's not as quite the same as this, uh, but hopefully something maybe a T sort of T lock, and uh, just twist it open. Just give an extra an extra thing to stop stop it from opening. Uh, the roof, the roof, while the roof is strong enough, but uh, through the process I've cracked, I've actually destroyed the roof quite a few times. Uh, but luckily, they, are, they were flexible. So I put this corner bracket. I've made it by, by myself, by the way. I spot welded on, uh, strengthened the corner, and also I've noticed that the, the middle of the roof is actually flexing as I close it. Uh, so I'll wait until the roof falls apart, and I'll make something stronger. All right, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, this is the season finale of this uh, project, Utopia. Canopy, do it yourself, canopy, whatever you name it. Um, I hope you learned a, a thing or two from this manufacturing series. Um, if you like this sort of content, uh, DIY projects or uh, adventures video, uh, subscribe to my channel. Uh, and you can also find us on social media, Facebook, uh, by searching Custom Craft and Adventure. Uh, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.